Welcome to our lesson about the View Cube. This is the name of a 3D tool that Inventor provides for you to rotate your view of your model. Once you're used to it, it is pretty handy. By default, the View Cube is displayed on top of the graphics window. To control the display, go to the View tab on the ribbon. Now on the Windows panel, click on the User Interface tool. All the checked items will appear in your current Inventor session. Let's uncheck ViewCube, and the ViewCube disappears from the graphic area. However, when the display of the ViewCube is disabled in the ribbon as we just demonstrated, the ViewCube is automatically available in the navigation bar. I've just clicked on it, and now it's restored to the top right corner. Now, even though I'm not manipulating my model with the ViewCube right now, it does provide visual feedback about the current viewpoint of the model. To make the view cube active, just mouse over it. You can click on any face, edge, or corner of the view cube. Our view will rotate so that our selection becomes parallel to the screen. Each side of the cube offers a named view, and we have a number of additional views that we can use as well. There's a little house in the top left corner of the view cube space. This is the home icon. Click this to rotate to the default isometric view. An isometric view, by the way, is a way of positioning your 3D model in 2D space so that each of the three model planes, X, Y, and Z, has an equal degree of exposure relative to the view angle of the observer. It's a pretty common view in technical and engineering drawings. Once you move away from home view by selecting one of the other faces, you can see four little arrowheads pointing at the cube. Click any of these to rotate the view to the next face in that direction. Click the arc arrows to rotate the view by 90 degrees in the current plane, either counterclockwise or clockwise. If you click on an edge and drag, you'll pivot your view using that edge as an axis. To rotate the model freely, Click and drag a view cube. I mentioned a moment ago that the home view is by default an isometric view. The front, top, bottom, and left and right views are defined in relation to home. Click this arrow to open a drop down menu. It'll give you additional options that you can use instead for the default view. Let me redock the view cube on the top left so that you can see the flyout a little bit better. Okay. Now let's change our view a little bit. We'll choose Set Current View as Home. There's two options under Set Current View as Home View. The first is Fixed Distance. Fixed Distance defines the direction of the view as well as the extent of the model that fits the view. Let's click on the Customize arrow again. Set Current View as Home. The Fit to View option does what it says. It lets you view the entire model. You can also set your current view as the front view. Choose the Reset Front option to restore the default front view. Let's take a look at some options now. The View Cube Options window opens. Check this box to show the View Cube on Window Create. That means that the cube will display in the window by default. If you need to clear up some screen space, uncheck this option. We can choose to show the cube only for the current view or for all 3D views. I'm going to leave it at all 3D views. We can also choose the on screen position of the View Cube. We can dock it top left, top right bottom left or bottom right. View cube size. We've got a few sizing options here. In addition to normal, there's automatic, tiny, small, and large. Let's check out each of these. Currently, we're using the normal view. Let's try tiny. Click OK. This seems a little bit too small for me. Let's see if we can get to the options. Click on this arrow here. There we go, back to options. Let's try small. And click OK. 
That's a little easier to work with. Let's take a look at large. Okay, let's restore to normal. Next, we select the inactive opacity. That refers to how opaque or not transparent you want the cube to be when you're not using it. If you select 0% opacity, the cube won't be visible until you mouse in the vicinity of the cube's current position. Let's try it out. OK. As you see, the cube was invisible until my mouse hovered near where it was located. Let's try 100% now. OK. 100% inactive opacity means the cube is never semi-transparent. When dragging on the view cube, snap to closest view. If you check this box, your manual adjustments on the cube will snap to one of the preset views when the angle of your adjustment is close to one of the fixed views. Let's check out some of these additional options. Fit to view on view change. If you check this, the view cube rotates around the center of the scene and zooms out to fit the scene into the viewport. When you drag the cube, the view changes to look at the scene prior to the drag but doesn't zoom and continues to use that as the pivot point while dragging. If you don't check this option, clicking or dragging the view cube rotates around the current pivot point and doesn't zoom in or out. Use animated transitions when switching views. This lets you watch the movement between positions rather than just flipping instantly to the new selected position. Keep model upright. When clicking on edges, corners, or faces of the view cube, the orientation algorithm normally attempts to turn the viewpoint so that upside down orientations of the scene are avoided. Under the default view cube orientation section, we choose which model space planes to which inventor will align for front and top views. We've got any of six orientations to choose from for the front view. And for the top view, we've got four orientation options. Check here to show the compass below the view cube. Here you can enter an angle between the view cube front view and the compass direction north. Let's see how the compass works. OK. Basically, you click a cardinal direction letter on the compass, N for north, W for west, S for south, and E for east. This rotates the model to that direction. You can also click and drag one of the cardinal direction letters or the compass ring to rotate the model around the center of the view. Let's go back to options. Click Restore Defaults to return to factory presets for the views and the options. The Help Topics. These options are the same as you'll get by clicking on the question mark icon. Let's close the Help. There's a couple options here I haven't spoken about yet. And by the way, we can also access this customize menu with a right click on the view cube. So in case your cube is tiny and you can't see the customize arrow, just right click on the view cube itself. Back to options. And let's hide the compass. Uncheck this box and click OK. All right, take a home view. I've just selected this face. Now let's right click on the view cube and select lock to current selection. This defines the center of the current view and the distance from the center for other views. Notice the lock icon next to the home icon now. Lock to selection is enabled until it's unchecked from the view cube menu. You can also unlock by clicking the lock icon. When you select and deselect objects after lock to selection is enabled, you don't affect the center or distance from the center of the view when a view orientation occurs within the view cube. Zooming to the extents of a model doesn't occur when lock to selection is enabled, even if the view cube is set to zoom to extents after each view orientation change. Near the top of the menu are a few more options we haven't explored yet. Orthographic, perspective, and perspective with orthographic faces. 
This refers to the type of projection of a 3D model on your 2D screen. With orthographic projection, the model doesn't display with a vanishing point as it does in perspective projection, which better approximates how things look to us in real life. Instead, the points of the model are projected along parallel lines to the screen. Basically, things look a little bit flatter. The reason for this is because it can be distracting to use perspective view when you're sketching in 2D. However, the view cube does give us a middle ground. Perspective with ortho faces. Perspective with ortho faces is when the model displays in ortho mode when one of the standard ortho faces is active, like front, back, top, left, right, etc., and then in perspective mode in any other view. And this concludes our lesson about the view cube.